Good evening, Professor. Returning from work, I take it? I commend you for working so late into the evening. All of my days at the Academy are enriching thanks to you. Try not to overtax yourself, alright? I'm concerned for your health. We wouldn't want you to wear yourself out. The Goddess won't smite you if you rely on others for help, you know. Listen here, Professor. You might not like what I'm about to say. To be perfectly honest, I had my doubts when I first met you. I don't want you to think less of me for saying this, but here we are. At first, I thought you seemed too young to be a professor. It is unusual, you have to admit. Yet, you seemed very composed and mature despite your age. You're strong-willed, encouraging, and you go to great lengths to ensure that everyone is cared for. But it almost feels like you're trying too hard to be a perfect role model for your students. If that's how you feel, then I can't disagree. But I think it's necessary to give yourself a break every now and again. The mind has a tendency to make mistakes when you've exhausted yourself. In my case, I still seem to make mistakes even when I'm wide awake. Oh, you know, I'm always mixing up the dates for drills or misplacing things. Just the other day, I forgot to put on my uniform and headed out to practice wearing only my... Oh, um, well, you can imagine how embarrassed I was. My mind can be so scattered sometimes. Anyway, where was I? Ah, that's right. What I'm trying to say is that you shouldn't push yourself too hard. If you do, you might end up in a pretty bad place. That reminds me, is there anything I can do to assist you, Professor? If it's all right with you, I'd like to help in any way I can. Whatever you need, just say the word. I look forward to helping you out. You there, youngster. Won't you listen to this old man's troubles? I was born and raised right here in this town. I spent my whole life here. My daughter lives in the Empire, and she sent me a letter to ask if I was keeping up with my daily worship. Well, hello there, Professor. Is this a friend of yours? Is that so? I was sure you two knew each other. Is there something we can do for you, good sir? Oh, what a lovely young lady. I was just telling this kind soul a story. Really? What's troubling you? Well, I was thinking of going to daily prayer, but my leg's been acting up and I can't walk properly. How terrible. That's no good at all. May I be of assistance? I'd be happy to lend a shoulder and escort you to the chapel. Would you? Oh, I'd be most grateful to you. Thank the Goddess for sending this young lady to me today. We'll need your help too, Professor. Here, sir, take my arm. Splendid work, Professor. He really seemed to appreciate our assistance. Putting a smile on someone's face always seems to brighten up the day. Is something wrong? You're giving me a strange look. Oh, mm, how should I put this? I suppose it's just second nature to me. It's difficult to describe, but I can usually tell when someone is worried about something. Back there, I could tell that both you and the old man were in distress. I spent a good amount of my life living in the church. Maybe that's why I'm so good at identifying these things? Did I not mention that before? I spent nearly ten years of my life in the Church of Fargus. Many came to us with their troubles. In my own time of need, I once ran to the church myself, and they helped me. May I share something with you, Professor? It's about a dream of mine. 
I'd like to work in the church one day. I want to be like the priest who helped me. Never mind. It's not a very realistic dream. Please forget I said anything. If I were someone else, perhaps a commoner without a crest or stature, maybe things would be different. It's a bit sad, but this is the way things have to be. After all, only the goddess can decide our fates. Do you have a moment, Professor? I need to speak with you. Thank you so much. This is what I wanted to address. This letter from my adoptive father just arrived. Oh, have I not mentioned him? He's the reason I first came to the Officer's Academy. He's also the one who dragged me from the church where I was living, just so he could use my crest. My crest does not yet belong to a house, so he plans to use it as leverage to marry into the nobility. He's a very greedy man who was a roving merchant before adopting me, but now he's in the capital. This letter says that he's finally arranged to marry me off to a wealthy noble. <sighs> I know he's just thinking of himself, but can't he see that this isn't a priority when we're at war? what to do about this proposal. I can't see any way around it, so I fear that I must. I just don't want to let go of the life that I've made for myself. I know it's not what my heart wants, but I don't have the strength to say no. I believe I've mentioned this before, but I want to work in service of the church. Well, I suppose it doesn't necessarily have to be the church, but I want to help those in need. If I were to marry a noble, I think it would be difficult to realize that dream. It's just... I've always allowed myself to follow the whims of those above me. I convinced myself that everything in life was at the will of the goddess. I was blind to reality. I believed it was her will to both pull me from the church and guide me to the officer's academy. The decision to enter this war was the first time I acted of my own free will. My adoptive father opposed this decision, but I somehow managed to convince him. Still, I couldn't free myself of him completely. This letter is proof of that. It's not that I'm scared of him, but there is something that worries me. Ah, I knew you'd understand, Professor. I've sat down to write a reply several times, but I can't muster up the courage or the words. I was hoping you could provide me with the encouragement I need. If I don't, he'll go ahead with the arrangement. I suppose I must aim toward cutting him out of my life completely. Okay. I think that may have been just the push I was looking for. I'll tell him the truth. That I found a life worth pursuing, and I must decline the proposal. Maybe I should tell him I've fallen for someone else. <laughs> Why, it's you, Professor. Isn't that obvious? <laughs> I'm just teasing. Now I'm off to write this letter and stand my ground. Thank you for your encouragement. There you are. I apologize for the short notice, but I'm so glad you could make it. I'm sure you're very busy being the hero of Fodlin and all. Then I'm afraid that what I'm about to ask may come at an inopportune time. Do you mind hearing me out? Ah, great! Here it is. I'm going to Ferdia to meet with my adoptive father, and I'd like you to accompany me. I feel
feel the need to set things straight with him in my own way. I've already decided exactly what I'm going to say. I'm choosing to live my life how I want in pursuit of my own happiness. I need you to accept that. I'm in charge of my own destiny, not you, not anyone else, just me. Ah, I've waited so long to say all that. That's a very good question. Where do I start? Remember when I teased that I'd fallen for you? The truth is, that wasn't entirely in jest. I fell for you some time ago. In fact, I'd very much like to spend my life with you. Of course, that's only if you'll have me. Oh my goodness! Yes! Let's! You've no idea what this means to me. This may be the happiest I've ever been. I'm so glad I could finally express my feelings. Now we can live the rest of our lives together. To think, I was able to choose this path of my own volition, and now I get to walk it with you. <laughs> Should one person be allowed this much happiness? But still, you're only given one life. Are you sure you want to spend it with me? I may be quite demanding at times, as I intend on pursuing my dreams. I want to help those in need, wherever they may be, and I won't give up on that. I thought that's what you might say. Perhaps that's why I fell for you. It's just the way you are. Alright, let's be off. It's no short journey to Ferdiad. Oh, something to note. You should know that I can be quite scatterbrained and clumsy, but I will do everything in my power to help and support you too, whatever you may need. What a wonderful life we will lead together. <laughs>